you know that honey lasts forever. It doesn't go off. It's not affected by viruses, bacteria, pathogens. It's, it's, it's one of those miraculous things. Apparently, the reason that honey does that is because of the frequencies of the bees' wings when they're building their honeycombs and when they're creating and bringing in the honey. So it's the frequency of the bees' wings that creates the hexagonal structure of honeycombs. It's also interesting is that the hexagonal structure is a structure of, of, of oxygenated and structured water that cures disease. This is really important. If any one of you can go and record the frequency of bees in a beehive, the buzzing of the bees' wings, and you take that frequency to a lab, a biochemistry uh, lab, and you expose a petri dish of viruses, bacteria, and fungus to the frequency of the bee's wings, I suspect that that frequency will kill the bacteria. George Lakovsky's multiple wave oscillator um, is a spectacular device with which he cured his father, listen carefully, he cured his father of quadriplegia. You don't cure people of quadriplegia, right? His father was admitted with quadriplegia into the hospital in the USA. Six weeks later, he walked out on crutches. The way he treated him is every day he walked in there with a little small handheld portable multiple wave oscillator from George Lakovsky and treated him for about 45 minutes up and down his spine, after which he exposed him to color light therapy for another hour. He did this for four weeks, six weeks. His father walked out on crutches. I saw the hospital report. It says, Mr. So-and-so ex exhibited a remarkable recovery. That's it. It's spectacular. They just won't go there. <laughs> they will not be you know, engaged in any explanation. In 2011, Anthony Holland, this is now in a TED talk, show us which frequencies kill cancer cells. Very briefly, okay, he tells us between 100,000 hertz and 300,000 hertz kills cancer cells and he shows us in the TED talk. We now know that cancer is vulnerable between the frequencies of 100,000 Hertz and 300,000 Hertz. So now we attack leukemia cells. Leukemia cell number one tries to grow a copy of itself, but the new cell is shattered into dozens of fragments and scattered across the slide. Leukemia cell number two then hyperinflates and also dies. Leukemia cell number three then tries to make another cancer cell. The new cell is shattered and the original cell dies. Magnetrons obviously generate huge amounts of energy and that's just sound. It's a resonant cavity magnetron. Resonant cavity magnetron that's used in laser beams, laser technology, microwaves, all use magnetrons for that technology. Sound acts as a close cloak of invisibility. Uh, this, there's so much new information about this. Uh, you know, this opens a whole new chapter and debate. There's very advanced new sound cloaking technology right now available. Uh, this plastic 3D acoustic pyramid acts as a as an acoustic cloak, makes things, make things invisible when you put it underneath it, when you expose that pyramid to specific sound frequencies. And that pyramid is reminiscent of what? Is reminiscent very strongly of Eastern architecture. Uh, sound creates hurricanes. In 2003, these guys lodged a patent to create hurricanes with sound. And then here's another one. Sound creates supercluster galaxies. When I said earlier, the lower the frequency, the larger the cymatic shape. Now you've got a frequency that's 57 octaves lower than middle C, rumbling away from a supermassive black hole in the Perseus cluster in the key of B flat, creating a supercluster galaxy. And it's amazing. This is a, apparently an image of it. I like the one on the left because when you watch Hans Jenny's cymatics documentary, that looks identical to the images of lycopodium powder on a metal plate with sound frequencies on it. This is like lycopodium powder that's creating supercluster galaxies. This is insane. So you start to get the, the, the idea of as above, so below, there's no end. This is what really disturbs me. The fact that we could put out fire with sound 
and yet this has not been employed or used anyway. Why? Because it's not good for business. Remember, if we, the moment we stop the growth and the need for money, the entire global financial system collapses. This is just spectacular. These kids develop this little resonator that puts out a fire. Five seconds, count it from the moment they put it down to the frying pan to when the fire is out, five seconds. Imagine the fire trucks arriving at a building, burning building, the ladders go up, and instead of fire hoses, a bunch of speakers get switched on and put out this frequency. That fire in the building will be out in literally a few, few seconds or a minute. The entire fire, everywhere, because it res it'll resonate right through the building. But that's not going to happen, because that's going to save a lot of money. Swarm robotics where it'd be attached to a drone, and that would be applied to forest fires or even building fires, where you wouldn't want to sacrifice... Five seconds. Uh, Sound energizes the air we breathe, and this is how we actually oxygenate our bodies and our lungs and or through our, our lungs, the blood in our veins and our arteries rather. Because as you breathe, the sound that the air that you breathe makes a bloody noise and it goes into your lungs and it goes into the smaller and smaller orifices as it moves into your lungs. So it speeds up and speeds up and speeds up and it goes higher and higher and creates these frequencies and it's the energy and the sound of this, the air that you breathe that actually energizes the oxygen in the air so that oxygen is buzzing as it's moving faster and faster by the time it reaches the alveoli and it goes from the alveoli into your artery uh, in, into sorry you're from the lungs into the arteries that oxygen in the air is buzzing and energized from the sound and that's when it goes into your blood and it's used in the blood and it's stripped of the vibrating energy and when it's stripped of the vibrating energy you breathe it out again and it just repeats that cycle and that's how we oxy uh, energize the oxygen that we breathe that don't teach you this at medical school in 2011 Luc Montagnier spontaneously generated DNA by exposing a tube of water to certain sound frequencies that had the frequencies of a DNA in it and constituted DNA in, in, in an empty test tube. If you can create DNA in an empty test tube with sound, now you start understanding how we can start cloning other species and other creatures just by sound and vibration. And then obviously sonoluminescence, the star in a jar. God said, let there be light. A bubble with brilliant light inside a body of water. Is it possible that all the star systems that we see out there are actually just giant bubbles of light <laughs> in a never-ending mass of water?